Hi, you student types. Hey, my name is Seth, and I have a question for you. How would you like to find aliens? Yeah, you know, those guys from outer space? Okay, but those are movie aliens. Why do we think there might be real aliens out there? Well, I'll tell you. This is the Milky Way. I mean, you probably can't see it from where you live because of the street lamps, but maybe after dinner tonight, you could walk out to the nearest desert and take a look up in the sky and you'll see the Milky Way. It's, you know, kind of this faint band of dim stars across the sky. That's the galaxy we live in. The other thing about the Milky Way is that those stars, and there are like two or 300 billion of them, those stars have planets. Almost all of them have planets. We know that now. So that means that in our Milky Way, there are roughly a trillion planets. Of course, most of those planets are gonna be kind of uninteresting, like my neighbors. But some of them can be okay. Some of them, maybe one in five, one in 10, might be somewhat like the Earth with, you know, oceans and atmospheres and the kind of place where you might expect life to develop. We don't know that for sure, but that seems like a very reasonable assumption. So the obvious question is, all right, if they're out there, I mean, we think they might be, how could you find them? Well, the most obvious way is simply to go there. That's what they do every night on television, every week in the movies, right? But going there is not very easy. A fast NASA rocket like the one that's going to Mars now, you know, it moves like eight or nine miles per second. That's pretty fast. Not eight or nine miles per hour like your bicycle, but eight or nine miles per second. But even so, to go to the nearest other star, that would take you 75,000 years. Do you really want to sit in the middle seat, you know, playing video games for 100,000 years just to get to the nearest star? My guess is no, okay? Another possibility is that they've come here. You know, those UFOs people see in the sky? Well, you may believe that some of those UFOs are alien craft, but I don't, and most scientists don't. And if you go to the local science museum, you won't see anything about UFOs because there doesn't seem to be really good evidence. I mean, do you think the aliens may have crashed in New Mexico 60 years ago? Most scientists think that's pretty unlikely. So we can't go there, they can't come here. So how are we gonna find them? And this is what we do here at the SETI Institute. SETI, S-E-T-I, almost my name, which is S-E-T-H. What does S-E-T-I stand for? Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. In other words, at the SETI Institute, we're interested in finding life of all kinds, but in this case, we're talking about intelligent life. You know, life almost as smart as that kid sitting next to you right now. Okay. So how do we do it? Well, we use big antennas. These antennas may look like backyard satellite dishes to you, in case you have a backyard with a satellite dish in it, actually. This is the Allen Telescope Array. There are 42 of these antennas, and they're in Northern California, about 300 miles north of San Francisco. And we use them every day to try and eavesdrop on signals from the aliens, because for them to get here is hard, but for them to send a radio message to us, you know, that's actually pretty easy. We also have big receivers, complex receivers. Now, you might become an engineer and design these things. These big receivers listen to millions of channels at once because, you know, ET never told us where on the radio dial the signal might be. So we have to look all over the place. So have we heard anything? Well, not yet, but I figure it's probably going to happen pretty soon because the experiment's getting much better. Our receivers are getting better, right? We have more and more people working on this, and it actually, I figure, it could be very well one of you that actually makes the discovery of aliens in space. So would you like to do that? I mean, you know, sure, maybe your, your, your plans right now are to become a YouTube star or something like that, but imagine if you could become the first to find aliens, real aliens in space. I mean, you'd go down in the history books. People would remember you forever. So what does it take to do that? I mean, how do you become a SETI scientist? It's just like becoming any other kind of scientist. I mean, you stay in school, you study those topics that appeal to you, whether it's chemistry or geology or biology or astronomy or physics or engineering, any of those things, right? And when you get out of school, you start taking a job. The important thing is to take a job that you find interesting, where the work they're doing is interesting. And the bottom line is, you could be the first one to find aliens, not at the local multiplex, right? Not on your television late at night, but in the depths of space.